two, ping one. Good morning, and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church, 2011 Brandon Avenue, Roanoke, Virginia. We're here today on this beautiful, beautiful sunny morning. We're here on the third Sunday after Pentecost, and today we're celebrating the affirmation of baptism of two of our young people in just a few moments. It's good to have you here with us today, and those of you out in Ethernet land, good to have you worshiping with us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A few uh, announcements to share with you today. As I said, Alex Covington and Richard Ronan Totoy will confirm and, and be, be confirmed and affirm their baptism. Wednesday evening, we have a 7 o'clock evening prayer. Join, you can join us online or in the sanctuary. We ask you uh, to be in the sanctuary by 7. Please wear masks at this time. Habitat Workday. We got a reprieve because of scheduling conflicts. We are actually going to be doing Habitat this coming Sunday, Saturday from 8 to 2. Um, and it is at the Habitat House, the Apostles Build on Mormon Avenue. We have room for three more people. I can have three more people join us on Saturday. If you can come for a few hours or for the whole time, 8 to 2, please let us know by Tuesday and um, we'll have a lunch provided for you. That's why I need to know by Tuesday you're coming so we can order the lunches. Applications for the Jerry Higginbotham Scholarship must be submitted electronically to the church by Tuesday the 15th. Information is on our website for that. And drive-in Sundays, we continue in June at 10 a.m. And then starting July 4th, we're moving this service to a cooler hour at 9 a.m. Uh, starting the 4th of July. And then on the 4th of July, we'll be gathering for in-house worship at 10.30. We invite you to come and stay a little bit later for the morning service and come early for the 10.30 service. And we're going to have fellowship out here um, on the lawn and on the, on the parking lot for people to gather before the 10.30 service. Local Summer Mission Week is coming up Monday, July 5th through Thursday the 8th. We're doing an in-town in mission trip. We'll gather here at the church at 9 o'clock each morning and then go out to our mission sites. The first two days, we'll be building dog houses at Habitat for Humanity and selling those to support the Habitat ministry. Um, youth are invited to, to come, and we encourage you. You'll be, go, you'll be an invitation coming out uh, tomorrow online. We ask you to, to respond to that invitation to let us know what days uh, you can join us for that. We need to plan accordingly. And so we're going to build dog houses on Monday and Tuesday, paint them and, and put them all together. And then on Wednesday, uh, we're planning right now, um, either on Wednesday or Thursday, going to Mill Mountain Zoo, doing some cleanup work there, and getting a behind-the-scenes tour of Mill Mountain on, on that day. And then another day, we'll be doing local um, yard work for some of our neighbors here in our neighborhood. So youth, you're invited to come. Whether you can come for the whole time or for some days, let us know. You are welcome. We need to know that you're coming. Other announcements are before you in our bulletin and on our website. And now let us begin with the song, Shout to the Lord. Let's hear you sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us unto yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I will take, I will myself take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it, in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live, and the shade of its branches will nest, winged creatures of every kind. All the trees in the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, and I make the high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Alex. So for our young people, let's see the young kids real close. Oh, there you are. Come on. Come on. No, Levi, no, my God, no, you're good. Here we go. Let's bring the Blanchard Brood. Here we go. Look at that. Gavin, I like your, your, your bow tie, bud. Looks good. Oh, and Landon's got a regular tie. Wow, man. And Naomi. Hey, I'm Mr. Denman. Good to have you all here this morning. Hey, um, what's in this bottle? What's probably in this Water. bottle? Water. Water is good, right? It's good to drink. When you're thirsty, mm. it's good to spray on your face when you're hot. And when you come in from a busy day playing out in the dirt, Naomi, Naomi, I'm talking to you. And they, it's good to have water to wash with. It cleans us, right? We wash our hands, our hair, everything, we wash our clothes, or even our cars, we use water to wash. Well, today, um, we're remembering baptism. And Alex and Ronan are going to be affirming their baptism today. They're going to be remembering it and making it important in their life. They're gonna be making pledges based on their belief in God as baptized children of God. Now, each of you has been baptized. You've been baptized in the waters of your baptism. And the waters of your baptism whether you had it inside at the font or like when Naomi out here on the sidewalk, makes no difference. It's the same water. And that water, we're affirming. The word affirm, Denman, what is that word? You know what that word means? Affirm. What do you think? Yeah, it means to make it special and remember it. And, and confirm it. So affirmation, it sounds like confirmation. We affirm that Ronan and Alex have already been baptized. They've been sealed with the water. Made the mark of the cross was up on their forehead. They are children of God, but we are affirming their baptism today in their proclamations and in their promises to follow in God's way, to make God help them, to help, let God help them show them how to live. And that's what we do in confirmation. We affirm what God has already done in our baptism. So remember that, especially as you see other people baptized. Because, you know, Denman, you, you're, you're different than Landon. And Landon's different than Gavin. And Gavin is different than Naomi because you have gotten to see your younger siblings, your younger, your brothers and sister. You have seen them baptized. And you can tell them, right? Landon, you can tell Gavin about his baptism, and, and so with Naomi. And, and what's Denman here? He's supposed to tell you about his, yours, right? It helps you to remember it and to affirm it. And so we're remembering Ronan and Alex's baptism today. And we're making a special prayer to God 
to give them his spirit to show them how to continue on in their life as baptized children of God. So you pay attention when they're affirming their baptism because you can remember yours as well. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for the gift of water, water that nourishes, water that cleanses, water that gives us life. In the water of our baptism, God, you were present and you gave us life with you forevermore. Thank you, God. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So those of you who know me well know that I would never describe myself as someone with a green thumb, right? There's the fact that the few flowers that I have out in front of my house are still alive mid-June is a source of great joy for me. So I'm grateful for those who do plant and grow seeds and for those for whom it is a gift and passion, especially those who do that here on our grounds and those who share from their gardens with us here. In that second parable that we hear from Jesus today, he compares the kingdom of God to a mustard seed, the smallest of all the seeds, he says. And from what I can gather, the mustard seed was not actually the smallest seed at the time. Apparently that honor belonged to some type of orchid, and some people argue that people in the ancient world didn't, just didn't know about this small seed. Others suggest that perhaps Jesus was taking a little homiletical license, exaggerating for effect. Either way, it's true that mustard comes from a very small seed, and it grows into something big. Point taken, right? We can find all kinds of examples in the Bible of God working through seemingly small things for people to make big things happen, right? Little David fought big Goliath and won and later became king. Baby Moses in the bulrushes became the leader of Israel, leading God's people out of slavery and into the promised land. Another little baby this one born in a stable in Bethlehem became the savior of the world. God does indeed use little ones to make big, amazing things happen. Oh, am I not on? The battery ran out. You're getting on the mic. They probably want me to start over again. Huh? The board down. <laughs> you always start over at the beginning? No, everybody's like, no. Okay. Yeah, so, all right. Mustard seeds are very small. <laughs> God can use them to make big things happen, right? And that, I think, is a really appropriate way to read the parable of the mustard seed, right? And it's definitely an important reminder for our confirmands and for all of us today as we consider our baptismal calling. 
But even with my limited plant knowledge, I still suspect that there's more to what Jesus is talking about here today. In Luke's gospel, Jesus says that the mustard seed grows and becomes a tree. In Matthew, the seed becomes the biggest of shrubs and grows into a tree. Mark's version is probably the most botanically accurate. Here, Jesus simply says that the seed becomes the greatest of all the shrubs. A mustard seed doesn't grow into a grand tree like the cedar of which Ezekiel prophesied in our first reading. It becomes a bush, a shrub. Not particularly regal sounding, is it? Even more than that, several sources that I read describe the mustard plant, the brassica nigra, not just as a lowly shrub, but as a weed. One commentator writes, mustard is indeed an herb with medicinal properties and one that is useful for flavoring and preserving food. The mustard bush, though, is a garden pest. No one would sow it on purpose. It grows all too readily on its own, and once it appears, it takes over the field. Another suggests that Jesus is resorting to comedic exaggeration. Surely the kingdom of God is like something majestic, something powerful, something really big, like a, a mountain or a cedar or an eagle. A mustard seed? This is like comparing the kingdom of God to a dandelion. It sows itself. It shows up in our ordered lives without our planning or expectations. It's tough to get rid of and packed, impossible to get rid of, but we do try to get rid of it, or at least we used to, right? <laughs> now we know better. We like to, we want to try to get rid of it so that the order that we have planned, the way we want things to look, can continue unblemished. But it's impossible to tame to get it to grow only where we want it to grow. Think about that. What if we read the parable that way? That might be a little tougher to hear and to understand. I mean, what does it mean to describe the kingdom of God as something pesky, something annoying, disruptive, even dangerous? The Greek word here is basileia, which means kingdom, but it's not just about a place. The word also refers to kingship, royal rule, royal power. Kingship might be a somewhat foreign concept to us, but authority and power, we get that, right? What does it mean for someone like Jesus to rule over our lives and our world? Of course, for those who feel out of control, those who are oppressed, depressed, Jesus saying that his reign is pervading our world is at the same time a strong word of hope, isn't it? Years ago, many years ago now, my oldest son and I both read the, the Hunger Games books together. And then we went to see the movies and had a good time with that. But if you haven't seen or read them, the story takes place in the futuristic empire of Pan Am, which has taken over the United States. And every year, one person from each district is forced to fight to the death in the Hunger Games as entertainment for the elite and to keep the masses in check. And there's a scene in the first movie that comes to mind. President Snow, the dictator of Pan Am, asks the director of the games why they must have a winner. The answer, he says, hope. He wants to give the oppressed people of Pan Am hope that maybe, just maybe, the odds will be in their favor and they may win the Hunger Games and escape their life of servitude. Hope, he explains, is the only thing more powerful than fear. But for that very reason, it is as dangerous for a dictator as it is useful. A little hope, he explains, is effective. A lot of hope is dangerous. That's what Jesus offers. The perilous, precarious hope that God's kingdom is coming. 
We can't manipulate or control it or even call for its coming, but we know that it is. And the gracious good news is that we get to participate in that kingdom. As the baptized followers of Jesus, we are called to live into God's kingdom of hope and love and justice even now. And that, Ronan and Alex and all of you gathered here today, is what confirmation, what the service of affirmation of baptism is really all about, right? Now, Alex and Ronan and your families, you know we spent some time studying Martin Luther's small catechism this year, and I know you remember exactly word for word what Luther writes about the second petition of the Lord's Prayer, right? Yes? Do you want to come up and recite it? No, I promised them they wouldn't have to memorize anything. Second petition of the Lord's Prayer, your kingdom come. Luther writes, in fact... God's kingdom comes on its own without our prayer. But we ask in this prayer that it may also come to us. How does this come about? Whenever our Heavenly Father gives us the Holy Spirit, so that through the Holy Spirit's grace we believe God's holy word and live godly lives here in time and hereafter in eternity. That's the daring hope that comes with our God-given faith even in this far from perfect, often painful and violent world, followers of Jesus don't just look forward to the love and justice of God's kingdom coming someday. Our hope moves us to live into that kingdom now, following Jesus into that kingdom today, letting go of our greed and our lust for power, lifting up the oppressed, loving the unloved and the unlovable. In just a few minutes, the two of you are going to come and make some pretty, pretty big promises. And all the rest of you are going to remember with them your own baptismal calling. I'll ask you, do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. And you two told me that you're ready to respond. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. And you are. You are ready. You're ready because it's just a continuation. You're continuing to live out those promises Continuing because this is really the life to which you were called years ago at your baptism. Proclaiming the love of God, empowered by the Holy Spirit, living the love of God, supported and challenged by this community of faith, sharing the love of God, by striving for justice and peace in all the places you go, in all the things that you do. Amen.
Now if the two concert ads would come forward. Here comes Mrs. Macri. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these two people, one with us in the body of Christ, who are making public affirmation of their baptism. I present Alex Covington and Ronan Tatoy, who desire to make public affirmation of their baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these young people whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You've called them to yourself, enlightened them with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished them in the community of faith. Uphold your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I invite you to join in the profession of faith. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, believe in, in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, you ready, Alex? All right. Hello everyone, my name is Alex Covington and I am a newly confirmed member, well, we're not confirmed yet, technically, <laughs> uh, to me, uh, being baptized into Christ has always meant that I'll have hope, I'll always have God on my side. Uh, one of the biggest reasons for my faith, um, definitely be Caroline Furness. Um, Going up to camp every summer and just learning about God and faith while interacting with the wilderness and the Lutherans, just being out in the creation and learning about God and interacting with other Christians, it's a unique experience to learn about faith and God and everything, really. You know, about tons of stuff at camp. Um, and so Caroline Furness has impacted my faith for the better and I couldn't be happier for it. And for me, church has never been boring. It's all because of Pastor Dave. I, I just love I love Pastor Dave. He's a great guy. Um, he's, he's always made the sermons interesting by throwing in little jokes and sticking out of the subject. And he did, he, I, if I had a dollar for every time he mentioned um, his favorite shirt, you know, the blue shirt with Jesus loves you, dot, 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 but I'm his favorite. <laughs> Minimum, I'd probably have 20. Um, and then there's also Mr. Carey, who is my confirmation mentor. He, he has guided me through the tough times and been there to support me and the happy ones. And then Ms. Sheila, who was uh, my secret pal years ago and has always just been there for me. A wonderful woman, and 
I'm going to be volunteering at the library this summer, so I'll be working for her. And there are plenty of other reasons for my faith. So to shorten this statement so it isn't super long, um, I'd like to thank every member of this congregation. Thank you. each year is what does it mean to you to be baptized? What does it mean to you to be a follower of Jesus? I am super proud of both of these young men and the responses that they have shared with you today. So, Alex and Ronan, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Alex? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Rona? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support these young people and pray for them in their life in Christ? We, we do, and, and we, we ask, ask God, God to help and guide us. Thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in Alex the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Choose a verse for each of our young people each year, and Alex says is Philippians 4 8. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about. 
Ronan chosen for you, Matthew 5.16, may sound familiar from your baptism. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Stir up in Ronan the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, let us rejoice with these siblings in Christ. We, we rejoice, rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. God in prayer. Holy God, you plant the seeds of faith in every nation. Enliven your church so that the good news of your grace may root and grow throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator, even the trees, shrubs, and flowers delight in your goodness. From the depths of the soil to the highest mountain, bring forth new plants. Restore growth to places suffering drought. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Judge of nations, we pray for our leaders and those in power. Grant them the ability to regard those under their charge with humility, dedicating their lives in service to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Divine Comforter, you show compassion to those in need and provide relief to those who call on you. Bless all who suffer, especially people trapped in cycles of poverty and homelessness, and all those we lift up now before you. We pray for healing for Floyd, for Stephanie, for Bob, for Ethan and Hilda, Austin, Tim, and Dee. Jacoa and Bob. Give safe travel to Carol and all who travel. Continue, Lord, to heal Terry. Be with Angela and Martin. Be with all who travel this day. Bring peace to Russell. Healing continuing for Jerry, for Danny, for Pam and Jan, for Kathy and all in need of healing and encouragement. We give you thanks for the life of Judy Cribb, and give thanks to her family who embraced her in love all these years. And now, Lord, from our heart, hear the petitions of prayer to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, we give thanks for our ancestors of the faith who are now at home with you, we look forward to that day when we are reunited in your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of his peace. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, we give you fullest thanks and praise for heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and the suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on his cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, you, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love and to live as your body in the world. In your name we pray, amen. And now may the blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen.
to serve the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. Alex and Ronan, there are going to be some cakes out there. I think we're going to get a couple cakes out there. Alex and Ronan are going to take them home to eat them, but you're probably going to want to come and look at them. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. 